All right, guys. I had a couple people asking me about my my meal setup following the Kim video, and uh, I took a lot of pictures over the years and uh, sent them. But this will be my first video to just kind of give everybody a idea of how my layout is. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I keep a lot of wood. It's all free wood that I collect. But I'm gonna spin the camera around now where I can show you some of the things that I've develop to make this uh, milling a little bit easier for a one-man operation all right first of all got a lot of questions about my my loading dock uh the loading dock is something that i came up with to try to make things a little easier when loading the meal previously i didn't have this guy this is my 50 horsepower kubota i use it for moving my logs and wood and of course, I use it to dig this hole to put my meal in because I live on a hill. But uh, the uh, the ramps, if you've got a log that's too big to pick up, you can use them to kind of assist the bucket to raise it up to get it up to elevation. And then once you get it up to elevation, of course, you set them here. This is kind of my staging area. I sweep them off, clean them. You know, get all that dirt and stuff off that gets on them when you're moving them around. And then here's my meal. I've got two beams cut. These were cut from hickory so that make sure they're strong. These uh these beams right here are made to sit on top of my loading dock and then go to the mill. And that's the way that works. So when I get ready to roll this next log onto the mill, I put those in place and as you can tell it's pretty much flat there's a little of a little bit of a lip right there so you got to break out the can hook and kind of give them a little little nudge but for the most part it's, it's it's not hard it is not difficult at all i had bought a winch to do this with but once i got my loading dock set up i didn't have to didn't have that problem my meal's a little different than what you're typically going to see with the lx25 i had a little problem with some vibration and wiggling that i didn't like and so I fabricated myself a four post design to uh, kind of cut down on some of that wiggling. I used to catch myself putting my hand on the fuel tank when I was milling to try to hold everything still. And so what I wound up doing was basically building me a bracket to where now when I'm pushing, I can push using this carriage. And of course the, the standard LX25 handle. Uh, one of my best investments is this guy hanging right here. Uh, I leave it on there when I'm not using the meal because I release the tension when I'm when I'm out of service and then before I go to cut I, I turn it back down and tension it back up. Uh, let me get a measuring tape here because a lot of the, you guys have been asking and wanting to know. Well, this is my my tool area and of course uh, my building 100% off the meal. Uh, that's my my sharpener which I. Uh, I love, uh, I haven't quite mastered it yet. I'm doing pretty good uh, so far. I haven't had to break out any of my new blades that are in that box right there. Uh, of course, I got a little bit of wood storage over there. I'm got some black walnut here. Uh, these guys are pretty handy. Uh, <laughs> DEF jugs, they, they work really good for transporting your water to your meal. Uh, that way you, uh, you get tired of using them, you just throw them in the trash. Uh, you go to the gas station, a lot of these guys with diesels will they'll be throwing them away but the back side of my meal which nobody really comes over here unless we're adjusting the dogs or whatnot uh, the back side of my meal from the ground up to the rails is about 19 inches on this side now this is a this floor is mostly sawdust now at this point i clean it out but i try to keep the sawdust on the ground because then if i drop a piece of wood it doesn't get sand on it it gets sawdust on it. Sawdust isn't as harmful to your blades on your saws as sand. So on this side, we're looking at probably close to about 22 inches to the top of the rails. Uh, this little crack down here that I've got, it gives me just enough room to be able to take my garden rake and rake all that pine, that uh, sawdust and stuff out when I do my cleanups uh, instead of having to shovel it and get down between the, the rails. And so I've got maybe you know, nine, 10 inches of space under there that I can get to. Uh, the beams on my ramps, like I said, I mentioned that the bridges are made out of hickory, but that is also hickory. 
Uh, it cost me a blade to cut those because it's kind of rough on my blade, but well worth it. Uh, but that's pretty much, uh, that's my setup. That's what I do. I've got some lights out here. I don't use lights a whole lot, but in the event that I do work late, I'm kind of off the grid here. And so basically that light right there is powered off of uh, this jump box with an inverter. So that way, if, when I get ready to go back to the to the house or to the shop, if it needs charging, I take it down, charge it up, and then bring it back up. Uh, you turn on the inverter, and uh, voila, you got lights. Uh, another tool that I have found very useful is my metal detector. Uh, sometimes I I use it when it's too late after I've done hit one nail because you get complacent. But uh, it has found multiple pieces of steel for me and saved me a a couple of extra blades because once i hit one piece then i i start extracting them that's it pretty much i do have a generator up here uh that i can use if i need to bring some other equipment up saws or whatnot uh my sharpener of course it runs off of uh the tractor battery so i just set my tractor up here let it idle while i'm milling and uh sharpen a few blades in between offloading the mill but that's about it like i said uh not your typical LX25, don't let it fool you. That was uh, some scrap iron that I managed to come across and fabricated my own rail to uh, help it. And yes, for those that's wondering, I can go all the way up to max, nothing hits, nothing's in the way. And using the DEF, it really doesn't matter that that's a little obstructed because those DEF jugs come with the uh, nice little nozzle there. And that's, that's all the way up. So can't go any higher but that's the way they that's the way they set these guys up so i like it well actually <laughs> my bad that's all the way up you got to remove this torque wrench before you can turn that handle just lesson for you there but as you can see the only thing that's obstructed is the lid on the jug but fuel's actually easier because now i got something i can prop on and <laughs> get the jug up there uh, all my switches and stuff miss uh, one thing i did find that i'll add to this when i got this meal for some reason kohler wood miser or somebody decided that the best place to put the pull cord was on this side and so you had to pull it you know towards my shed and it only took about once or twice of cracking my elbow on that guy there that i realized this thing can be taken off and and rotated to put it in whatever position suitable for your setup. So, so if your setup's like mine and you don't want to be snatching that way, which it never made sense to have the cable pulled from over here, but the workstation is supposed to be here. So now I can stand here and and pull and crank and operate the mill without having to walk to the other side just to start it. Uh, but that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, the uh, bottom of my mill, I got some uh, six by eights. I've got it reinforced like every four feet. I've got a, either a brace in the middle or legs on the outside. I did both just because it was, uh, it seemed like it would be convenient and uh, try to help distribute the weight a little bit. I did make my own leveling feet. Uh, I didn't see buying the ones that Woodmiser offers. So I went to the hardware store and got me some bolts and I got carriage bolts, a couple of sets of nuts and some washers. And then I drilled some holes into the uh, support board there. And by moving that nut up or down, I can raise the, the mill to level it. Uh, that was the only other thing I guess that I've done that that uh, didn't come factory. But anyway, that, uh, that concludes the tour of the mill. Like I said, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'm about to get to milling these logs here i got 41 by 10s ordered that i got to get cut so y'all have a good day thank you